God, we thank you that we can be here this morning, dear God. So many things have happened in this little time, dear God. We want to pray a special prayer going out right now for the person that contacted me this morning with her special prayer request. We're asking, dear God, that you make the way clear for her, intervene on her behalf, and that everything may go according to your will. We want to pray a special prayer going out for Shirley Weidman right now, dear God. We we have no clue what's happening to her, and we are praying that you give the doctors wisdom. You show them what is happening, dear God, and so that they'll be able to administer all the help that she needs, dear God. We pray for her strength as well, because we know she might be nervous at this time. A special prayer going also for Donald, dear God, with the situation. I pray also you give the doctors wisdom for that, that they may find what is happening, and that it's something that can be solved through medication, dear God. We pray for his wife at home by herself right now who is worried, but we pray her strength, dear God. And we, we pray for Donald's strength as well, dear God, giving wisdom in whatever decisions that will come his way right now. I pray for us now as we're in Bible study, dear God, just give us open hearts and minds just to learn more about your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, man, I'm not going to lie to you, this was not an easy one to put together and I had no, I have to tell you the honest truth I didn't even have a clue that I it's not like you know sometimes I tell you I was thinking on some stuff no I wasn't thinking on this one and this must have dropped from heaven because <laughs> I was not going down this road period I don't know what was happening but God started to give me and I'm not going to tell you I only got through two of them so there's going to be a part two next week to, to some more of this I'm not even 100% sure about the topic, how it is put forward, but every way I try to structure it, God gave me back this. I'm like, okay, that must be you, and I'm not trying to be disobedient today. I'm too old to get spanked. <laughs> <laughs> so I left it, right? And so it, it says, sometimes it is not a sin. And I mean, I was like, you want me to go say sometimes it's not a sin? What are you giving people? Excuse to sin? But you see what I'm saying. So people, let's get it. People oh. don't need excuses to say. People don't need excuses to say. They're going to say regardless. They're good on their own. <laughs> They're good on their own. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, makes me feel much better. Yep, yep. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, see, I remember. Just as you talk, I remember. Last week, I did not plug in this thing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> I was about to get into it. I was watching my brother and I forgot to plug it in. God would have certainly charged me. And said, Sometimes when saying. you're at a blind, can't you copy your brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't get to watch him as often. So I carve out this time right before Bible study when I'm setting up to listen to Sunday sermons and stuff like that. And trust me, sometimes when he's preaching, I was like, did this boy have a camera in my house? <laughs> yeah, he preaches something sometimes That's that... True. I am struggling with or that is happening here at this church huh. and sometimes I'm like wow you know and then sometimes and this one really like scares me is that sometimes he preaches the same message mm. that I'm going to preach or I just preached interesting mm -hmm. that's wonderful yep 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 so yeah my twin preachers mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes it is not a sin I know many times we have learned things taught to us in church from a tunnel vision perspective. Mm -hmm. Trust oh, yeah. me, I've learned that too many times. Some people say it's not true, but I know it's true because I was one of them that was taught that way and I was one of them that taught people that way. Mm -hmm. Hey, I can put my hands up. I'm guilty. <laughs> but this is true because if people want you to see things only their way, they're going to teach it their way, right? A lot of times when this happens, it's because we are taught things from man's perspective. Now, let me tell you this. Gary and I were talking about it. And we always say, right, every other perspective is wrong when they're beating you with the Bible. <laughs> you're not listening to what I'm saying and this is God's way, the right way. 
or is it your way? Mm -hmm. But when they're beating you with the Bible over your head and they're telling you you are wrong, that means their way is God's way. But I always say, can we as men, or when I say men, I mean humanity, have room for mistake? Duh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> but when they're arguing with you, they're saying, no, there is no mistake. Because as if God says, you know, Gary, you know, having coffee and we're talking and God, God is having coffee with Gary and he says, Gary, yep, this is exactly what you should say. <laughs> and so, you know, this is how man's perspective come about and then they put the word God behind it so nobody can't argue anything. So what, what are we going to do? We're not perfect and that's how it's going to be. Man will say this is the rule of God. Even sometimes when the Bible says or teaches something different. And we saw that last week where people say, this is how it should go. And then you have the scripture saying, but women can't serve. No, 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 I hear you. But this is how it should go. <laughs> so that is just how it is. Man will say anything, you know, and we can't change that. So today we're going to look at some situations. I thought I was going to get more in it, but... We're only getting to two. So the sum ain't working here. We're going to look at two situations and see if it is spiritual or man-made rules. Some of them are not so easy to figure out, right? And some of them, the scripture just clearly says that. But I don't know why we were taught this. The first one I want to look at is this. Is getting angry a sin? No. no. But how many people were taught in church that getting angry is a sin? <laughs> Anytime you get mad on something, why did you lose your temper? Get angry and sin not. I'm like, what do you mean? Why did I? You know, but people taught, especially me, I'm, I'm so glad. Many people taught us that getting angry is a sin, right? So if somebody offends us and we get angry, we sin. So what are we supposed to do? And then they say, turn the other cheek. But that wasn't when someone did you something. That's if someone hit you. <laughs> but what do you do when someone does something to you? Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> and I've seen people pretend, Lord have mercy. But I've seen them pretend, and then it gets worse. Better you blow up a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. Get angry. Yeah, because you're humans, right? So when I was growing up, I was so confused because, you know me, I had a temper problem. You know that, daddy issues. So growing up, I had a temper problem. Whether I was at church, whether I was at home, no matter what was happening, I had a mouth on me, Sunday school teacher said something to me. You see, I knew I couldn't get hit by the Sunday school teacher. <laughs> but I wouldn't do that at home because my mom would knock my top off. <laughs> right? And I was so scared of my dad and because he used to beat the crap out of me, you know, and then he's no longer there. You get what I'm saying? Now it's like, freedom, tell any adult what you want. <laughs> You know, so that was kind of what was happening at church with me. So when I was growing up, I was so confused because they would make it seem that once you got angry, you sinned. And so I started to pay attention to that growing up and I'm like, you have a temper problem. And I didn't know I have a temper problem and I'm like, I sinned. So there are times where after I got angry, I would go back, you know, even as a little boy and say, God, forgive me. I didn't mean to say that curse word. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. You know what I'm saying? I would, you know, because I got angry, right? And I didn't know I had underlying issues. I was young then. I can see it now. But I got angry. And so I was so confused. How do I, because they taught me getting angry was a sin, how do I say to myself now, this sin that keeps happening to me, how do I not get angry? What do I do? Right? And so this is not true. Getting angry is not a sin. Although many churches teach that. And I even got more confused when I started to look in the scriptures. Because I saw God getting angry in the scriptures. And I went, you know, to the Sunday school teacher, but God got angry here. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I was taught. I don't know if anybody has got this. That's why I tell you, church did a number on me. <laughs> I didn't go up the road and get the number. I got the number in church. That's how they did. So 
people you need to be careful, right? How could God get angry about something but not us? Uh, of course, I ask the question because you're saying, when we get angry, we say, yes. You must always know to stay calm. When someone does something to you, they always say, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I hear you, but sometimes it's best not to open your mouth because ain't no soft words gonna come out, you know? <laughs> and so you're trying to tell that and they're, they're just giving you this polished thing. I hate when people make the Bible polished. Mm. And then now you're saying, I can't live up to this because they're not telling you the truth, right? Then, this is what I was taught. I was told, right, I don't remember by who, but God's anger is righteous anger. <laughs> Did you ever get that, Gary? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, thank you. I was gonna say that before you. Okay, I'm, there, there I'm right. There is a righteous and an unrighteous anger in the world. Yeah, that's what they told me. You see, our anger is unrighteous, but God's anger is righteous. Not necessarily. That's what I'm telling you what they tell me, not me. Not me. That's <laughs> what they're telling me. And you I was like, have a righteous anger either, as long as you're on God's side. Yeah. It goes back to beating people over the head kind of thing. Yes. I can be upset with you. Yes. Because I'm doing this for God. Yes, I'm doing it for God. Yes. There was literally a church <laughs> that literally beat people over the head mm -hmm. when they're not getting what you want them to do. I, I, every time I said I was going down there, I ride my bike with a couple of my friends, but I didn't go in because I don't think me with my regular anger would do well with someone hitting me in the head. <laughs> so I didn't go in. Some of my friends went in and took a few whacks, but me, I was like, you know, I stay outside. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, that really happened at a church. They're telling you to get in the spirit and you're a little kid and you're not getting in the spirit and they put you in front of the aisle and they're like, get in the spirit, get in. And they say, say Jesus. He said, Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say faster. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And if you didn't say it, I'm, I'm not making this up. <laughs> he didn't say it. They're like, he's been disobedient. What? What? No, it's one thing when you do it to a kid. But when somebody like Gary's at the altar. <laughs> Big man. And they say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. <laughs> yes! Oh, yes! I'm telling you something that I that I experienced and I'm telling you, I said, uh-uh. This is church, I go to church. But of course, this wasn't happening at my church. I, that's why I told you I had always tried to visit churches. I, I've experienced a lot on the island. Ride my bicycle. When I stopped riding, I took cabs. When I started driving, I visited a lot of churches and I saw some things and I went. Yeah. And I thought I saw it all. But now I moved to America and I found other stuff. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. So I was told, no matter what happened, our anger is unrighteous. So there's no way that we should get angry. I was like, this is just not making any sense. I'm trying to figure out what's happening. And then, of course, when I came to the scripture about Jesus overturning tables, I, I, I said, you know, I got older now. So I said, explain this. They didn't have an explanation. Which I always tell you, if you can punch holes through regular things that people teach you, you know, your Sunday school teachers, your pastors, and they really cannot explain it to you, it's not right. <laughs> and that's what happened. I had simple things that I found out. No wonder they let me start teaching Sunday school at 15. But doesn't mean I knew what I was doing either. <laughs> Just to let you know. But one of the things is, I went to teachers and elders of my church and I would say, you know, this and I would, would be able to demolish them. So they looked at my knowledge, didn't say my maturity, <laughs> my knowledge and I was put in a position. So I was teaching Sunday school from I was probably 14 and a half, 15. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Whenever they call a teacher's meeting, here comes the little high schooler. <laughs> Along with all the elders and everybody sitting in the meeting. And I'm like, I don't think that should go. So That's what's up. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I was told, if you get angry, our anger is not righteous and God's anger is righteous. But then, just like what you said, Gary, they started to switch now and they would say, if it's of God, you know, 
God is leading you, then your anger is righteous. Somebody explain that other scripture now. Jesus was righteously angry. So yeah, if something is happening in church, you know, yeah. And one time, I'm not gonna lie to you, my brother and I had to physically kick somebody out of church. But it, it was, it was, they were disrupting the church. <laughs> so we had to do it. But you know, just like Jesus, they, he was trying to change the house into something else, and we couldn't allow that happening. So we, and I was an usher at the church at the time. So yeah. So we had to physically restrain him and throw him out of the house of God. That was something we didn't want to do, but we had to do it, right? And so, yeah, they said righteous anger. So I was trying to learn <laughs> how to be angry righteously. Do I not swear? Or do I swear? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to be polished. I'm a Sunday school teacher now. <laughs> 15 years old I'm trying to learn to do to be angry righteously can you imagine when I'm in teachers meeting and you know the older people are saying some crap and I'm like well that's not connecting with the younger people and they're and it's and I, and and they get me angry and I'm thinking oh no I'm sinning in this meeting and and then I say oh righteous anger yeah it's of God yeah and then I'm trying to say no how do you say this now you know it was confusing to me and I just couldn't get over it. So it was a lot, right? The, the truth is anger is a normal feeling or emotion. Mm -hmm. How are you going to stop a normal feeling or emotion? Mm -hmm. Everybody has different levels of anger. Some people, when they're angry, they can't speak. I've seen people, they're angry and people are mm, on them. And then they just turn and they walk away. And I go to them, why didn't you, why didn't you defend yourself? Why didn't you say something? They said, I'm too angry to speak. Mm -hmm. And I remember one mm -hmm. person said, when I'm angry, I don't speak because I speak with my fist. <laughs> so I walked away. <laughs> so, you know, and this is people who became Christians. So, you know, they were showing me different things. So as I said, I learned a lot. But it's a normal feeling or emotion, but right? What I do is apologize ahead of time. You apologize ahead of time. I'm, I'm, I'm in a really bad mood today. So whatever, com whatever comes out of my mouth to you, I apologize. I apologize. But I'm still going to say it. I'm still going to say it. I like that, right? But it is not a sin to get angry, right? And people need to understand that, right? However, it becomes a sin when we let anger manifest or turn into something more. So when we build on our anger and go over with it, that's when, you know, it's a whole different ballgame. Anger, still angry, good right now, but then if you let it manifest, it can lead to vengeance, you know? What are you saying? They shot my little brother? Well, I'm going to kill their brother. That happened recently there in Jamaica. There was this um, one guy, he was like a known fugitive and he was robbing and killing people. But he does not live with his family. He left the house a long time ago. His family is there. He shot somebody else somewhere across the island. Police looking for him. Everybody's looking for him. Well, the people that found out where his family lived and came back and killed many of his yeah, family no, members no, that no, had no, nothing no. to do with no. yeah. you know no, but no. vengeance no. led them to do that the family the only ones that were still alive left I think it was the the father and the sister and the mother because they got the brother they got the uncle there yeah and so they said they're coming back they had to leave their home and find somewhere else to live that wow. the people don't know about they had to get police escort just because the people said they're not stopping until either they catch the son. If they catch the son, then they'll stop taking vengeance. But if they don't catch the son, every family member has to go. That's vengeance, right? Retaliation. Sometimes somebody does something right now, you retaliate same time. You didn't even think. You're just so angry, you retaliate. You lose self-control, right? Losing self-control, you know, can lead to a sin because there are sometimes some words come out of your mouth. <laughs> Has happened to me, right? Bitterness. You get angry in your little corner until you become bitter. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. I will never speak back to Gary. Oh, yeah. In church, too. <laughs> I've seen that. Hatred. You know, this one, too. You can get angry and you act outside of God's will. That becomes a sin. Even though it's simple. Remember Moses? When God said to him, speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. 
was a simple sin. Come on, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, not because it's Moses. It was simple. It was simple because before they had a problem and God said, tap the rock, you tap the rock, water came, they drank. was good. Second time around, they're there and they're complaining and whatever. And God says, Moses, speak to the rock. And he heard them complaining some more and more and more. And Moses said, you are grateful, son of a gun. No, 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 no. Bah! Water came. God still let the water come. But God says, you have sinned. <laughs> That's why he didn't get into the promised land. I didn't get in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Moses' life wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. Think about it. That's why I said God has the power of death and life. His life wasn't finished and God said, listen, I'm sorry. You sinned. You ain't going into the promised land. I'm going to take you. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just showing you how anger wow. yeah, can change. So being angry is not a sin, but anger can manifest and lead to a whole lot of things and become sin. So I want that clear. Because I don't want anybody to leave here and say, Pastor said I can go over there and start fighting that person. <laughs> As I was told by someone, a Christian, when, I, when she was younger, I don't remind her no more because she's my godmother. <laughs> but when we were younger, and she said to me, when anybody gets me upset, I just take off my Christianity and put it in my back pocket and deal with it. <laughs> And I was like, I'm a little kid at that time. She's babysitting us. And I'm like, okay, I got the same anger issues. Godmother taught me what to wow. do. Hence, I got into all the fights. <laughs> Come on now. You, you see, I'm being honest. This is true to, true to life stuff that I was going through. But my godmother has matured now in the Lord. Thank God. <laughs> this was back in the 80s when she was talking to me. <laughs> all right. So, Numbers 11 verses 1 to 2. Listen to this. And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. They're complaining to God. They're complaining, God, you didn't do anything for us. This is what is happening. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord, literal fire, fell from heaven. <laughs> and burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. So the ones who were on the outskirts, if they were in a circle, he was burning the circle coming in. <laughs> Can you imagine? God was angry. The Lord have mercy. Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. Wow. Wow. Don't tell me getting angry is a sin. And don't ask me how can God do that and it's not a sin. Above my pay grade. <laughs> God is God and he answers to no one and he does what he wants to do. Is that clear? <laughs> I'm making that clear because I know some people might look at me but didn't God say? No he didn't. He created us. He can take us out. When you make something on your workbench or a picture and it's yours, don't you can do what you want with it? Alright. That's what I always tell people. So don't say he can't do what he wants with us because he created us right so but any of us created anybody no all right we didn't give life we can he gave us the way to help to make life but really creation is god here we go so this is what happened right here's another one right this is jesus and i use them in his physical form because there's a bunch of scriptures with god the father getting angry i don't need to exhaust that he killed a bunch of people or he struck people with leprosy or whatever that's God. But let's look here and see Jesus in his earthly form. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves. Do you know this was near when he was going to get crucified? This was right near then. So this was big. Some people didn't get that because they're thinking it happened long ago. No, this was near when he was about to be crucified. And he found them, you know, sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. Anybody buying doves? Doves, doves. Two dollars for a dove. Anybody buying donkeys? Donkeys, donkey. Can you imagine that upstairs on a Sunday morning? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one there with my hello turned back way. And I'm fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for the boss. Yeah, it's a beautiful boss. Picture painting of Jesus. Fifty dollars for the painting of Jesus. Painting of Jesus. Instead of having church in the temple. Or even if the temple was having church, they took the outside of the temple and that's what they were doing. Made it a business place. Wow. But that's what were happening. They were doing business. And when he had made a whip, I keep telling people, Jesus premeditated in his anger, mm -hmm. sat down and plat a whip. 
<laughs> I needed to understand this, but it still wasn't a sin. And when he had made a whip of cords, right, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers, money and overturned tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. No, everybody was so shocked and probably scared. That's why nobody went at him because they're saying this must be a madman. <laughs> because this man is beating everybody with whips. And you know in those days when they know someone is not of sane mind, nobody wants to mess with him because they know he has strength. And so they were like, whoa. But then at the end now they're like, what? He's talking about God. But yeah, Jesus was angry and this is what he did. Right? Just to be clear, God, no matter his Father, Son, Holy Spirit, has self-control and knows what to do, when to do, and is answerable to no one. So I want to make that clear because some people might go take this away and say, okay, God can sin, but we can't. I never said they sin. <laughs> right? So don't mistake us with God. We are not God. And don't try to fit in his shoes. We can. We are not God. We cannot behave and act like we are. But we do. <laughs> Just want to make that clear. You know, we are not God and we shouldn't behave like him. But we do. So when we do anything, we justify and put it on the righteous anger. Do you know what Kaya said to me? Oh, let me get a piece of my mind right now. <laughs> I've seen that in church. I've done it in church. <laughs> yeah, I've went and give people a piece of my mind in church. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Lord have mercy. Thank God now you've seen a better product. God has worked on me a whole lot. Right? God is always justified in his anger, even when we don't understand it. I'm not telling you to understand God's anger. I'm not trying to tell you to do that. When that guy was trying to stop the Ark of the Covenant from falling out and he stretched and he pushed mm -hmm. it back up and God struck him dead, to this day I don't understand it. No. He could have given him something else. He could have, you know, taken away his walking. He could have you know, said, don't do that again. Shout to him from heaven. I don't understand it, but God was angry enough to kill him. So in other words, we don't have to understand it. Just know he's justified and stay out of it. <laughs> don't get in people's stuff. Because we have instances in the Bible where people get into people's business with them and God. Mm -hmm. And God like, did I invite you into the conversation? Bam! <laughs> stay out of it when you see God disciplining somebody. You can pray and ask God to relent, but don't say, what are you doing? Stay out of it. But sometimes, as us, we, you know, we are also justified in our anger. That's something people don't teach, right? So sometimes we are justified. Not as God, but we are justified because somebody did something to us. Don't let somebody tell you that somebody did something to you and you're not supposed to be upset. Really? So anger of God, people need to understand it's not going to change because guess what? It's coming there's more for us to experience it's coming whether people believe it or not that means god is going to get more anger because he has prophesied his anger mm -hmm. don't forget mm -hmm. that so some people think okay it's all over it can't be all over because the judgment hasn't come yet right so his anger isn't over and this is just one little verse and you know not all of them there are so many in the bible but it says in revelation 6 15 right that the kings of the earth and the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and everyone. Thank God it said everyone. So we can know slave and free. They were all hiding themselves. They hid themselves in caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling on the mountains and the rocks. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne. This is people hiding from God during the judgment time. The time in the tribulation period. They are hiding from God. And what does it say there? And from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, when somebody is angry, they're angry. But when you say somebody is in wrath, that's like top level anger. <laughs> so God is angry, right? And it says from the wrath of the Lamb. So that means right here, this is Jesus. Uh oh. Mm. Same wonderful guy that healed everybody. Just letting you know. And it says from the wrath of the Lamb, from the great day of their wrath has come. God the Father, God the Son, mm -hmm. God the Holy Spirit. And who can stand? 
Who can say? You can't do me yeah. anything. Who can say? Nobody. Nobody. Wow. So I'm just showing you his wrath is prophesied. We can't get out of God's anger unless we have repented and taken him as our personal savior. So when I say sometimes I'm sorry for those, you know, it's it's hard. I don't know what else to do for people, but this is it's coming. And one day some people are gonna experience it. I don't want to be around, you know, I don't want to be one of those wonderful people that he says, Mary, I want you to stay back and help. No, I don't want to help God. I, 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 I want to go with you. <laughs> I want to stay and help during tribulation time, right? So anger is real. It's a real emotion, but when left unchecked in humanity, it can develop into sinful behavior, right? To be clear again, not every time someone gets angry, it is a sin. I need so there are times when people get angry and they sin there are times when people get angry and they don't sin so we need to understand that right Ephesians 4 26 verse 27 and usually people don't put verse 27 in it but it's very important because it says okay that wasn't me no. okay no <laughs> so I was wondering <laughs> right it says be angry and do not sin do not let the sun. Let me make sure I plugged in. Just to make sure I'm plugged in. Yes, I am. <laughs> Just, it was coming from there. Well, that means I got a message somewhere along the line, but I don't know how that came because I have, you know, my notifications turned off. But anyway, it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. That's the second verse, verse 27. Nor give place to the devil. Now I tell people. One of the best verse to look up. Or if you don't, just get an Amplified Bible. It's very good. It helps you, right? I'm not telling you to learn from the Amplified Bible. If you notice, I try not to quote scriptures on a Sunday. Because if Mario quotes scriptures, I only know King James. I'm sorry. That's what I studied. Yeah. yeah. So if I start quoting scriptures, and sometimes when I'm reading, I know them. And if you watch, you see I get myself in trouble. Because what's on the screen is not what's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> That's just because I know the verse and I, oh, I can't quote it. I'm reading from a next version. So, the Amplified Bible. Look at it here now. Be angry at sin. Right? So, sin has a whole lot of things. Somebody does evil to you. People can sin against you, you know, not only God. So, that's evil someone does, does to you. That's why it says be angry at sin. Be angry at evil that people do to you. At immorality, people will do something terrible to you. At injustice, at ungodly behavior. So it, it's categorized all of them so you know nobody can be left out, right? If I go somewhere and I see some people doing some things in church, you know, I see some people walking sometimes. Now I know you can come to church in anything, but please, you know, I said, please. I've been to church where I've seen ladies come and, and they sit in the front row and, you know, it's right here. And I'm like, what's going on here? Mm. Did they come directly to distract the man of God? or You get what I'm saying? Mm. I, I've, I've seen stuff like that. So mm. I'm saying, you know, that's ungodly behavior to me. Now to some people, I always say, let them come in. Because then I've seen people come to church with ungodly behavior and get converted. And then they're the most... They change. So give them a chance first. But some people are not. They don't want a chance. Lord have mercy. So you can be angry at these things. But it says, yet do not sin. People going to do evil to me. But I must get angry and don't sin. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. But remember, there is a clock on your anger too. That's the bad thing. First it says, don't let your anger cause you shame. In other words, don't allow it to manifest. So you start doing things that you shouldn't do. Then it says, nor I mean, allow it to last until the sun goes down. I read that more of a blowing up. Yeah, so the blowing up. Yeah. Shame, yeah. Once you blowing blow up, up and say things. Yeah, you can't get it back. You can't get it back. I have learned not to respond. And people say, you're so good at that. I said, no, I'm not so good at that. <laughs> because... I know the outcome of responding. <laughs> I've been down that embarrassing road, Gary. You get what I'm saying? I've been down that one. And not responding is less embarrassing than responding. Mm -hmm. And I learned I'd rather live with people say, you were defeated. How could you let someone talk to you like that? Versus 
who you think you're talking to? <laughs> I've, I've gone down that road and I've put shame to it, you know, and listen to me. The people that did me wrong, I had to go back and apologize to them and they were the ones yes. that did me wrong. Because my response was sometimes worse than what they did to me. So we yeah, no one put it to shame. We all know the story of the tongue. Oh yeah. <laughs> little, this little boy here, I don't yeah. know. He's always in the gym because he's never quiet. So he's always working out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You got to be careful. So it, the clock comes in. Because some people can hold it. They won't cause shame. But when the clock is ticking, you know, I, that happened to me too. You know, one time somebody hit me and I went home and I tried to study. But the clock was in my hand. Mm -hmm. I kept remembering, kept remembering. I didn't pray about it. You know, God says, pray, forgive me. And the next morning, what do you think I went? I went back and hit that. <laughs> was a big brawl. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. So when the sun went down, I was ready to fight. <laughs> so there's a clock. It's not the literal sun they're talking about. They're just using an expression of time. Because time was done by the sun back then and all that, moon and all of that stuff. So don't let time cause you now to come back and think on something to do. Vengeance and evil, right? Because when you're thinking of it, this is the top where it says don't give room to the devil. That's what it's explaining here now. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger. Or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. You're working on it like when you're digging a farm. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Gary and Nancy, I hate them. Yeah. And you know, they pass through the church. What kind of shoes that they're wearing? Oh, I hate their <laughs> shoes. You know, they, everything. So you keep and you cultivate it. You, oh, man, you wouldn't even know. Yeah. I've seen this in church. Oh, yeah. So this is this is what I've seen. Mm -hmm. That's why I, my, my, wife's father-in-law i always said i learned a lot from him he always said to me you know they think i don't go to church because you know i just don't believe in god i don't go to church because i sit in here when people come and talk to my wife i hear the different because they live like their house was here the church was like over there i see what's happening in there i see how people are protected he was exposed to all the bad sides of christianity and so that's why. So, but thank God he gave his heart to the Lord before he passed off. Right? But yeah, be angry and sin not. Right? The Bible is being real. Right? In how we should handle our emotion of anger. Thank God the Bible is real. Thank God the Bible talked to us about that. So why didn't they just tell me that as a little boy? Man, they got me through so much, into so much trouble because nobody taught me the right thing. See, so teaching is very important. That's why I tell people, Sunday school, get kids to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Even if they learn the wrong thing, if they question, they'll learn eventually because the Bible says it will lead you into truth. I was led into truth and I found my way. I went to a good church, don't get me wrong. But again, not everybody has a full handle on what is happening in the Bible. And sometimes you think the person has, but they don't. So, you know? Right? So don't let anyone tell you getting angry is a sin. Right? It's a regular emotion. Right? But however, bear in mind, <coughs> being angry has a time limit for you to work out through your feelings. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody, because you need to work through the feelings. Don't hide it. Right? Because I've known people that have hit it and then when the person come back to them, then they just poof, explode because they were sitting on it. Work through the feelings, right? Conflict resolution, forgiveness, reconciliation, all these things need to be done after a certain time. That's where a lot of marriages collapse. Mm -hmm. Now all marriages collapse because of infidelity. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, the first thing you know, we, oh, you and Michaela getting divorced? Yeah, when did pastor cheat on you? You know, you, you know, the first thing you think is that somebody cheated or something like that. Not all marriages are about that. <laughs> it's a simple thing as, did you wash up the plate? I've been working all day. You know? it, conflict rest. And you don't get over that. It's just some simple things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So at no time though, <laughs> at no time, we are allowed vengeance. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, at no time. Uh, now listen, 
when I finally got that in my brain and said, okay, no more vengeance, because I was a vengeful person. This is the other one that I flipped over to now. All right, God, when is vengeance? <laughs> <laughs> that is where I went. So I didn't go right. I just went a little bit in one direction. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to hit the person. I'm not going to fight. But when, God, I'm waiting. When, when? Is it tomorrow? Is it today? Is it next week? Come on, I got to see it. And guess what? God didn't promise us in the word that we are going to see it. He didn't tell us anything like that. He just says it's mine. Lord have mercy. That's hard. <laughs> Vengeance is for God, not for us. Right? Romans 12, 19. And it's in the Old Testament too. It says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves. What? <laughs> you know, I showed some people this and they're like, Are you saying I must not get evil? No, sorry, I didn't say it. The Bible did. That's what I told a lot of people. They said, Are you saying? I'm saying, No, not me. Because it was me, I told you to get evil. <laughs> the Bible said it, so that means I have to obey it and you have to obey it. Never avenge yourself, but leave way open for God's wrath. Woo! God's wrath. Anybody here can get angry than God? Can anybody here burn up people with fire from heaven? No. Come on. All right. So we understand how God can get angry, <laughs> right? Leave way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteousness. He's the righteous one. He can control himself. He knows what punishment meets what. Because for you everybody know, that does... times when the earth opened up. I swallow... It, once in the Old Testament, yep. I can think of. And mm -hmm. those people that didn't, you know, said they gave more than what they did. Yes. You remember that Ananias and Sapphira? Yeah. <laughs> and they died right then and there. Yeah. When Korah and other people say, We shall be the prophets! They have the incense and all of that. And God says, Stand back. <laughs> That's what the scriptures of God says. Stand back. I'm like, what? For what? <laughs> this one was new. The earth opened up and ate them. <laughs> That's like, so don't get, I tell people, you know, leave open for God's wrath. Sometimes God is punishing somebody for years and we don't know. For years, right? So leave for his judicial righteousness. For it is written in scripture, vengeance is mine. This is God talking. I will repay, says the Lord. He's the one that's in charge of that. I always, somebody said to me, but I think I can do a good job. And I said to somebody, can you get angrier than God? And they said, no. I said, make it more clear. Can you hit harder than God? And the person went, no, no, I can't hit harder. I said, exactly. Let God hit for you. Because if God hits someone, they're well hit. I can't hit harder than God. I can give a black eye, a bloody nose, but listen, God can strip someone's life. And I've seen that, you know. Can now, is lying good? always wrong or a sin? Oh, is lying always wrong or a sin? Ugh. I would Ooh. love. I want somebody to tackle. Not you yet, Gary. Because I think me and you are on the same position on that one. So anybody else want to tackle that one? <laughs> Guess what? Gary, we can say this. Many of them are thinking it but are afraid to say it. <laughs> well, I've heard pastors already say all lying is a sin. Yes. Including the people in, 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 uh, in the occupied countries yeah. in World War II who lied about neighbors who were Jews. They had to go back and repent afterwards for lying. Wow! I'm sitting here thinking, what? <laughs> really? I never heard little, that one. That's stretching things a little bit, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but so for good reason. But you, you want to take it? Okay. I tend to think that <laughs> if it has a bad intent, there you go. Ah. If it has a bad intent, then it's wrong. Yeah. Listen, we're afraid to say, but it's the truth. <laughs> because we don't want to say there are times when line is good. Uh oh. The only two men in the room. <laughs> Do these pants make me look fat? <laughs> I'm gonna stop it right there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're married. Say yes. And, 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 and my wife says, you know, I've learned already. <laughs> Anything my wife. I, I, You're beautiful, honey. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful, honey. Yep, I love you just the way you are. So listen, right? This is the truth. Are you saying lying can be good? 
I just said it and I'm saying it again. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and I know some people are looking at me, they're probably on the camera and they're like, he's going to hell. <laughs> 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 right? But listen, that is why we have Bible study. No, I want people to understand. I didn't just come to this, you know, get up one morning, oh, it's all fell. No, no. Studying, experience, and me lying to sometimes. For good. What? Past their life? Yes. yes. Right now, <laughs> if they have a world war or something happening and they're looking to kill all the people that are white, I'm going to hide people in my basement. I'm going to hide people. I don't care. And if they're looking to kill all black people, I expect you to hide me. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying yeah, to you? Yeah. I just put something out there so we can all understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so if they come and say, Do you see that black pastor? No. Nope. Don't know where he is. Ooh, he went back to Jamaica. Well, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to tell people. Some people don't want to say it, but we are going to go to this one today. How many of us, because this one, oh, I'm a pastor, yeah. I've lied oh, to yeah. dying people to give them peace in their oh, deathbeds. Yeah. Oh, everybody went silent now. <laughs> Couple of people have done that. You know, no. you're sick. Your mother is dying and your mother, how are you going to take care of yourself? Mom, I'm going to be fine. You don't know that. But you don't want your mom keep holding on and you just yeah. say, I'm going to be fine. But you can't take care of your illness anymore. I used to help you. I'm going to be fine. Or it's okay, mom. You could be you can die. Go. And we're, and we're like, dying oh, inside. Yeah, we want them to stay. Yeah. It's okay, mom. You can go. Yeah. It's okay, dad. You can go. And in the back of our mind, stay, stay please, please stay. Yeah. stay. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Husband's dying. Yeah. All of these things happening. We, we've done it. I know people might not realize, but we're not perfect. We've done that. We have done it. Right? God hates lies. Uh-oh. I just put you into where I know I'm bringing you right here. Oh, I'm so evil. <laughs> right? God hates lies, especially when we lie to him. Oh, my gosh. No, just as you said, Kaya. They are good lies. I'm not talking about this, the society thing of white lies now. I'm not talking about mm. that. Get that out of your head. Mm. There are lies that are good and there are lies that are bad. Lies that go against what God teaches. And if you go against what God teaches, he hates that. Yeah. Right? And if you even go as far as to lie to him, you're brave. So we'll be looking at what happened to people that did that. Now, first thing we look here. Lying lips are an abomination. I use the old one because I want abomination means something that God hates, abhors. That's the old word for hate, abhor. <laughs> God hates it. So lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Don't tell me God doesn't hate things because he hates lying. He hates sin, right? But those who deal truthfully are his delight. This is from the wisdom book Psalms. So we know God hates lying. Right? Now in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and his wife Sapphira, we were talking about that. Right? Lied to God and God struck them both dead. Now this is the funny, it's funny because Ananias and Sapphira had their stuff. Why did and they have to lie? Right! God did not ask anybody to sell anything. No. God did not say, sell your stuff and take care of the poor. People said, this is what we want to do. We want to help everybody. We're going to sell, pool our money together, and make sure everybody has something. Right? Mm -hmm. God never said, bring in. So don't nobody tell me about tithing because it was never there. The apostles never said, bring your 10%. Mm -hmm. they, they never said that. They said they wanted to do it and they're going to do it. So they brought what they had. The Bible didn't say people sold the land for $20 and said, oh, I'm giving 19 they don't know, we don't know how much they gave. So people could have gave out of what? They didn't leave their family hungry. That's the best way to put it. They were just helping other people. These two sold the land. And when they sold, they're like, how do you know it was that valuable? Then for heaven's sake, take the money and go buy another land. And give what you want out of the rest. God was not going to do that. But you come and you say, um, yes, we are giving $5. Everybody's like, oh, five dollars, wow. And it's like, yep, we sold our land. And everybody's like, wow. And God was like, you son of a beep, zap. <laughs> and that's it. It was over. And the wife came and the wife, they're like, how much did you sell the land for? She's like, what 
did we plan again? Oh yeah, we sold it for that. And there was like the same feet that carried your husband out. I'm gonna carry you out. And God went zap too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the scripture said it's because they lied to God. It's not because they lied to the apostles. Because they lied to God. The apostles had no way of knowing how much money and they weren't going to ask that question. So the Holy Spirit said, these people are lying to me. Do you think that was a, a, a pride thing because oh, yeah. they made it look like they gave everything? Mm -hmm. That's what they were making it look yeah. like. They gave Polishing everything. Polishing their image. Yep. Mm -hmm. making it, And it's, you know, God was like, how could I bless you with something and then know you're lying back to me right. with it? You know, so they lied to God. So God took this as personal. Yeah. Don't lie to him. Yeah. That's how he can do stuff. You know, I better I tell a lie on Gary and Nancy or anybody else in this room. But don't lie. <laughs> when it comes to God, you'll be in serious trouble. Right? It's clear now that God hates lies. Now, when is it a good time to lie? To save someone's life. Thank you. I thought, you know, I asked a couple of people these questions over the years, and people went, yeah. <laughs> but let trouble happen. Let their life be in danger, or let them be protecting their kids. Which mother, someone breaks in the house and they hide their kids, and someone comes, you know, to kill kids? Mm -hmm. Do you have any children? No. Nope. Where's your child? Send him all back to Jamaica. Just, you, you get what I'm saying? You're going to hide your children. Come on. You're going to lie. Are you thinking that you're sinning when you're doing that? No, no. Okay. Because, think of it, because that's in the Bible too. I didn't even bring up that story, but that is actually in the Bible. They're killing all the kids. <laughs> they hide Moses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't think the guards don't come and say, where is your kids? His mother had, was, I don't have any. And she had to hide all the stuff mm -hmm. that there and then send somebody and then go and watch the kid and I'm like, yes, I will watch him. I'm a wonderful nurse. That time she's the mother. Come on. La oh, Lord. <laughs> Lies. When is it a good time to lie? Think about I tell people all the time. Right? Joshua 2, 3 to 7. And I love this oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. I picked this one out of the book because this one is why, why reason I love it for a special reason. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab. Rahab, the woman of prostitute. the night, the harlot, the prostitute, whatever you want to say. That's her, right? And you need to understand why the king knew that was the first place to go. When men visit the city, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where they go for entertainment. Mm -hmm. So Rahab knows what's happening in the city because men check her first. Mm -hmm. Come on now. It's simple. Doesn't take rocket scientists to figure out this scripture. So the king of Jericho sent to Rehab saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two. <laughs> so actually this was in motion when the message was sent to her. And she's like, oh, no, I'm not going to let them get killed. And, and believe me, they were trying to be discreet. I know they're God's men, but if you're going to come and spy out a country and not go to the prostitute house or the whatever house you want to call it, you're going to look odd. The red light district. I li right, the red light district. I like that one. You don't go into the red light district. Now, if you came in with your wife and your family, you wouldn't look odd because they already see that you're... But as a man coming to visit and you're on the dusty road and you're going to visit the red light district. Mm -hmm. Come on now. So they, as men, knew already they had to stop at the red light district, even though they were surveying the land. Sometimes you got to understand what the scripture is saying. And she took the men and hit them, right? So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. You know, I'm just busy doing our service here, <laughs> right? And he says, and it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark. That the man went out. Man, her lie is good. She's not leaving any holes. Look at this. Where the man went, I did not know. But pursue them quickly. They just left. For you might overtake yeah. them. <laughs> right? But she had brought them up in the roof and hidden them between the stalks and the flax. Which she had laid in order of the roof. So in case people come in and they looked up, everything looked in order just the same. 
And she lying through her teeth to the king's men, right? Then the men, she was so convincing at the lie, the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan, to the forts. They went chasing. Send them on a what? What we call a wild goose yeah. chase. Yeah. <laughs> Right? And as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. So she sent the guards after them. But there was nobody they were chasing. Come on now. What was this? It's a lie. <laughs> and a lie to protect who? The people of God. Uh oh. I say that to people and they get, you know. This is the first thing that comes out of people's mouth. Pastor, you have to understand. It's Rahab. She could not do any better. She's a lady of the night. A sinner. I'm like, so who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you are a sinner too, right? Who are you to judge anybody? This woman heard about the God of Israel and started to believe. Before she met someone. And that's what Christ is all about. It's the same thing. It's just, a, it's just an earlier part in the Bible. But she heard about God and started to believe. Because if she didn't believe, you think she would have put her neck on the line for them? Mm -mm. Alright, so I already tell people, the lady of the night, the former prostitute, was already starting her conversion. Come on. And she became an ancestor of... No, no, not yet! Not yet! Not yet! <laughs> That's where I was going. That's where I was going. So might as well we put it out. Yep, that's okay, true. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. But it's the truth. This same lady of the night, right? That people quickly say she's a sinner, right? And they say all that became an ancestor in the line of Jesus. That is big. You know, I always like to start it off with people that don't know. I say she became the ancestor in the line of David. And then people go. Oh wow. Oh well, not too bad. And then I said, you know who else? And they're like, what? I said Jesus. And they go, what? <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing, they were tracking men. Come on, what is the lineage? They tracked the men. Read that thing again. They were tracking men. How did their name get in there? Only God. Wanted to prove a point. He can yeah. use anybody who he wants to use, who will come to him, he can use them. So yeah. And we tell so much story about her ancestors and we don't say anything about her. Can we talk about Ruth and Boaz? Yeah. She's yeah. Boaz's mother! <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Boaz's mother! Uh oh! <laughs> wow! Yeah, we tell all the stories. Yeah, Boaz, coming from the line of Boaz and yeah. David came and whatever. That's David's bloodline. Uh oh! Wow! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! Anyway, it came out, so we can't go back. <laughs> right? So, are you saying, and I say this to people, when they start judging, she's a sinner, she's a harlot, she's all of these things, lady of the night. I said to them, are you saying, God, you sin to get his will done? Because it's a lie, you're saying all lies are sin. So you're saying, God said, okay, I'll use this sin to work what I want to get happen. You didn't have to do it that way. <laughs> exactly. You could have done it another way. Yeah. That's why I know it's not sin. Because yeah. God doesn't operate with sin. Right. Right? He can put things into action and other ways, just like how we said, that particular king is going to let go people. He's going to make him great. He's gonna, and that king is going to still think and say, well, who did this for me? Must be God. I don't know no other God, but you know what? Well, let me do a work with their God. He could have done that. Because mm -hmm. he said years before it happened, like 600 years before it happened, he said there's going to be a king called Cyrus who will do it. And he told what was going to happen. God knows what he's doing. So he could have found another way. Yeah, because yeah, God can't sin. And exactly. And he cannot look yeah. at sin. Yeah. So you're telling me that he said, yeah, I'm going to use sin this time. Just this one time. Just, just one time. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Wasn't Rhea rewarded for her lie? Yes. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> she was rewarded for lying. 
I know some people now are mad. What is this man talking about? Uh oh, let's go on. She struck a deal to save her entire family, not only her, but her entire family. And it was honored by God and the people of God. We need to understand that two people honor that, God and the people of God. Because if God didn't honor it, her name would not be in the Bible now, in the lineage of Jesus. <laughs> so God honored it, and also the people of God honored it, right? It says in Joshua 2, 12 to 14, Now therefore I beg you, swear to me, this is her, by the Lord, uh -oh, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show Kindness to my father's house. That means everybody in that house that lives with her father. Right? This is not the prostitute house. This is her father's house. And give me a true token. And spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all they have. That means all the wealth that was acquired from. <laughs> Come on now. I'm just trying to show you some things. Because sometimes people don't understand what is happening. All that they have and deliver us from of our, our lives from death so the man answered her our lives for yours if none of you tell this business of ours it shall be when the who lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you so this is a pact between them and god and the lady uh -oh. Uh -oh. and when they uh when they finally got into the city didn't they burn everything yes so she couldn't have known ahead of time that that was gonna happen exactly right? but she asked for her things from before yeah and she got she her so things specific wow. and the whole family extended family mm -hmm. it says but joshua had said to the two men who had spied into the country go into the harlot's house her title never changed it <laughs> yeah. go into the harlot's house and from there, bring out the woman and all that she what? has, yeah. as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives, in case you think the sisters were left, and left them outside of Israel. So that all she had, plus the relatives, left them outside Israel. Then they went back and burned the city to the ground amazing but what caused all of this a lie <laughs> one of the most famous scriptures that are preached and nobody wants to say it came from a good lie that's that's the truth i can't do anything about it, it just came from a good lie right rahab afterwards right. remained with the israelites and converted to the laws of god uh-oh if we, if it was Mary or not, mm -mm, I don't want any harlot telling me what to do. Mm -mm, <laughs> no, mm -mm. spear her. Listen, when we go back, we burn her. She's a harlot. This woman, no, don't know what happened to her family. I'm not concerned. That's not my business. What I can tell you is that the harlot remained with Israelites and converted to the laws of God. Found a little man, got married, had boys. <laughs> Come on now, and from that same lineage <laughs> david and jesus and, oh lord have mercy all because she told a good lie Hi. all right <laughs> we should have been finished a long time but bible study is so good <laughs> what about missionaries that go to countries under false pretense to tell people about god i've always said that to people are you saying these missionaries that sneak into these countries Tell people about mm. God. They have to lie to get there. I don't want anybody to tell me the missionaries don't lie. Don't tell me. I know they lie. I know they lie. Nobody has to tell me. I have friends that are missionaries. Right? In fact, <laughs> Carol is here. We financially support one of these missionaries that is going on one of these trips. Right? Where Christianity is illegal. He couldn't even tell us where he's going. Because right. he doesn't oh, yeah. want it to be. Yeah said yeah, where he's going country. can't put it on print he just went on the map and drew a big circle and said yeah. it's somewhere there yeah <laughs> and we christian people help and we gave him money <laughs> to go to go tell the gospel and he's going into the country under false pretense i'm here to do this okay and then he's making the underground church come on now or we send bibles yeah we send bibles yeah we send the gideons with the bibles don't think that when these gideons 
Gideon was, I was at the Gideon function the other day and he said they were giving out Bibles, but um, some people don't know what it is. Because right. they don't look at the books. And they were stopped. And they were in one of these countries where you can't give out wow. Bibles and they were stopped. And, uh, you know, guns, everything, and they opened the trunk. He said about 500 Bibles were in the trunk. Mm. And he's like, oh well, I guess this is where God wants it to end and I probably die or in prison or whatever. He said they got out of the car, both of them, and they opened the trunk. And he said the guards went and looked and looked at the Bible. It's in their language, you know. The Bible is written in their language. So it says Bible in their language. Mm -hmm. And they looked, they looked, and they looked, they looked. And they said, nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> and they went, just books. Okay, you can go. And they just drove off and went to the place to deliver the Bibles. True story. Yeah. The man is from our area. So I'm not talking about somebody that's yeah. far. Mm -hmm. And he comes to our church and speaks regularly. Wow. So he was telling the story again to me around the table. And I was like, wow. He says, he still don't understand but God blinded their eyes because he said they checked thoroully. Yeah. And they looked. And he's looking at the guy that's with him and he's looking at the Bible and I can't they read? <laughs> it says Bible. <laughs> Over 500 Bibles and they did not recognize even the words or anything and they said you're good to go. So well, yeah. wanted those Bibles in that country. Mm -hmm. yeah. So listen to me. Don't tell me people don't lie for good because... God honored those Gideons lying to get into the country with those Bibles. That's God right there. So these missionaries lie to give out Bibles and have underground churches. Mm -hmm. All of these things, right? Many missionaries go to these countries as teachers. Mm -hmm. We're here to teach English. The good book says, blessed are the poor. <laughs> yeah, researchers. That's what, what ours is going in as a researcher into the country. Agriculture. Yeah, agriculture, all of these things. But their aim is to bring the gospel of Christ. I tell people, I couldn't do that job. I'm glad he called me to teach because Mario is not good online. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I tried a couple of times. I'm not good at it. I get nervous. <laughs> I get nervous when I tell life. That's why my wife, she knows. <laughs> And that's why if I'm trying to hide something from her, and when I say, you know, hide something from her, the only time I can hide something from her, she doesn't know is if I'm planning a surprise. Yeah. But if something happened or somebody died or somebody is sick, and they say, don't tell Michaela. And they say, somebody, she comes to me and says, how's Gary? And I go, he's fine. She's like, you liar. He's sick. What's wrong with him? <laughs> I can't lie. I'm not good at it. I tried, but mm -mm. Can't protect her because I know she has the pressure, so I try not to tell her certain news. And stuff. Mm -mm. my wife, she reads me like a book, so <laughs> I, I, I stopped. <laughs> it doesn't work, right? So, are the missionaries wrong, right, to lie to God, to lie to get God's work done? No, no, because God honored their work and what they have to do, you see. If the missionaries are wrong, my question still remains the same. Is God using sin to get his will accomplished? No. No. He can do whatever he wants. Exactly. And I've been asking people this and they're, they don't want to answer me anymore. The first time they were like, but then afterwards when I started getting to people like the missionaries, then they get quiet. They don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> because they don't want to say God is using sin to get... They still believe all... Lies are evil, but then they don't want to say that because they might, you know, get God upset. Or does God just allow us to operate this way because of others' sinful nature? It's other people's sinful nature why we have to lie, you know. <laughs> it's not ours, right? We're not saying we're perfect, right? Because there is no other way. How are you going to get into China That's if you don't illegal. lie when it is illegal to, for Christianity there? Yeah. The only way you're going to get in there is to, to lie. Come on. There's no other way. I've seen it. The last person I knew that came back from China, when he came back to the church, someone spilled the beans that they think he was a Christian. He was a high school English teacher. He was teaching second language. Yes, he was. Have the, he was in charge of the underground church. And someone spilled the beans and said they think, and they dispatched soldiers for him. But someone in the the soldier camp was also probably in the underground church. I sent a message. I said, 
get to the plane. And so by the time they got to the house, they're like, where is so-and-so? And they're like, oh, you decided to leave today and go back to the United States. And so that's, so he says, my time in China is done. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, these are stories of people that are doing these things, right? God is not human, but we are human, right? God is not answerable to anyone or under any restrictions, mm -hmm. right? Or under any earthly law. He resides outside of the earth. Come on. But we are here and living in this world. We are answerable to people. And to him. And to him. I know some people are like, we're not answerable to people. Oh, yeah? If you get up and the president wants to say something, can you get up and say, no, Mr. President, be quiet. I need to talk. Mm. They lock you up in the prison. I don't care if it's a good president or a bad president. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So we're answerable to people, but we're also answerable to God. So if God says to go there, and we have to lie to get to go there, we just got to. That's how it is. He doesn't have to lie, though. And we need to understand that, right? Because God is not a man. You see the scripture saying a whole different thing to us now says God is not a man that he should lie because he doesn't answer to anybody. He doesn't have to lie. Nobody can say, God, you're, you're wrong and I'm going to discipline you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So God is not a man that he should lie. We are men. <laughs> so we have to lie. <laughs> Nor a son of man that he should repent. He doesn't have to say, oh well, I did this and I'm going to turn from my sins. No, because he's not human. So he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. So we need to understand that. This verse reminds us that God can do anything because he's in charge. Thank God he's the one that's in charge. So all these people that are saying, you did this and you did that and you lied. And, and I was like, but God said I should do that. And they're like, God never told you that. Oh yeah? God dwells outside the earth. He's not here under any rules, right? And so... We live on earth and based on the situation for the good to save a life or to bring the word. We can lie and sin won't be charged to us. You see, this is how we get it. Abraham journeyed, right? Now this is Abraham. Journeyed, this was the man that God said is my friend. Journeyed there to south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. Now let me tell you this. This is what we like to call a little white lie. Because Abraham and Sarah were related. A lot of people don't know they, this. They, they were half sisters and brother. This is the truth. Yeah. Different father or different mother. I don't remember which one. But they were half brother and sister. So he told a little white lie. Hey, she, you know, she's just my sister. Right? Why was he so scared? The area had a reputation for taking your women. And if you didn't give them up, they could kill you. Mm -hmm. Abraham did it again in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's not the one that got me. Okay. It was his son. Did it too. Yeah. Yes, his yeah. son did it. So he did it. Because he was scared that... Now, this is the thing. Who told him to go to this land? God was the one that sent him out there. And he's like, well, God, I ain't going to let them kill me. You better work it out. So, he did that, right? So, if Abraham had not lied, he could have been killed. He could have been in prison too, or could be killed, right? And God realized, right? So, if he had sinned, why did God defend Abraham? Remember, you know, people say he lied and it's a sin. But if he sinned, why did God defend him and chastise Abimelech and all his household? God chastised Abimelech and said, listen, you took the man's wife. And he got talking to him in a dream and he's like, no, I did this out of the innocence of my heart. And God said, yes, you did it out of the innocence of your heart. But I was the one that stopped you from touching her. So he took her to have sex with her and God let him know in the dream. I was the one that stopped you from touching her. But your intention was to Yeah, because God said to him, I stopped you from touching her so you would not sin against me. Because there's no recovery from that. <laughs> That's what God said to him. And God says, this man is a prophet. Give him back his wife. And then let him pray for you and you will be healed. 
And that's when he already knew that he had a disease. He didn't know. His family, everybody in the house, because he said, everybody, God says, pray for him and your family will be healed. Everybody in his house was sick and he didn't know because God already struck them. From the lie. Uh -oh. If this was a sin, would God honor sin? Come on. Mm -hmm. He had to protect his wife, his family, everybody. Right? The son. Old enough and got his own wife. Where did he go? Look at that word same there, Gerard. Place. Where is that? Same place. same place. God told Isaac to go down there. Isaac went. This is where I'm going to give you. And he's showing him all of that and stuff. And he's there dwelling in the land. He's dwelling there. The men already start looking at Rebecca. The men of the place ask him about his wife. He already knows the reputation. Yeah. Just like his father. <laughs> he's smart. He's like, she's my sister. <laughs> Father and son, two different times in their life, same area. So the area had a reputation. She, for he was afraid to say, my wife, thinking the men of the place might kill him on the account of Rebecca, since she is very beautiful. It happened when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, is the same king? Yeah. Abimelech, <laughs> right? So he's in his old days now. King of the Philistine looked out of the window and saw Isaac caressing Rebekah, his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, See here, Rebekah in fact is your wife. He remembered the last time what happened to him. So he said, How dare you say to me she's my sister? And Isaac said to him, Because I thought I might be killed because of her desirability. She was beautiful. You know what? Abimelech said, he says, listen, nobody touch him nor her, his wife or anything else. Because if you touch them, you will be put to death. I don't even care. The cause, that's the law he put in the land. Stay away from God's people. All because he told a lie to save his life. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I tell people, fix these scriptures to suit the way you want it. But listen, you can't take away what God did. He honored their life. And but Abraham <laughs> did it twice. Yeah. 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 And the son came and did it. And he, when they went to Egypt, yeah. he used that same story. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. So that's what I'm saying. So both father and son lied to save their lives, hoping some way God would work it out. They were only in that land because God told them to be there. So they wouldn't be in the position if God didn't put them in it. So, so they got scared. God put them in a position. They were obedient to God's, what's that? Will. See, there's a difference. This, I need people to understand why there is a difference between a normal lie and the lie they told. They were in God's will. Genesis 34, 1 to 2. Don't tell me nothing could have happened because Jacob went to a land with his family and listen what happened to his daughter. And this is all relatives, just, just different times. Now, Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out unescorted to visit the girls of the land. They moved somewhere new and they started settling there. Everything was going good. When Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Hivite, he's a prince, right? A sheik of the land saw her, said, woohoo, kidnapped her, lay with her intimately by force, in other words, rape, and humbling and offending her. No other man could ever get her after this. Because she was now raped. No man wants, in those days, had to be a virgin. Come on. Very few men could look past that. Don't ask me how <laughs> Rahab's case was cured. Not my cook again. Above my pay grade. But this is what was happening. She was raped. So don't tell me it couldn't happen up here. He couldn't be killed with the other scripture with Abraham or Isaac. Because this is what happened to Jacob's daughter. No. The revenge was not vengeance took place and you know is that where they went and killed oh yeah guys? they killed all the city all the men of the city yeah because oh. remember jacob had a lot of sons so they planned that strategy and they took yeah. out vengeance right and we already told you vengeance is not theirs yeah and we already know jacob's sons were not the best of <laughs> <laughs> they learned later in life right so sin if you want to understand how that lie is not a problem, look at what sin is. Sin is an immoral act considered to be a transgression against the divine law. Whose law? Second one, transgression of the law of God. 
right? And then, thirdly, sin is regarded in Christianity as the deliberate and purposeful violation of the will of God. So if you are sinning, you must be going against God's divine will, law, transgressing against God, and going against his will. That's what sin is. Mm -hmm. Just like what you said, if you're lying and you're not going against God's will, you're not transgressing his law, then how can it be sin? Mm -hmm. Oh! You see, this is where many people forget that. They just term something and say, this is sin, because no, 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 no. It's just like when they say money is evil. Money can't be evil. <laughs> You get up, but you use it to do evil, right? So if a lie is told, but not going against God, or His law, or His commandments, or His will, it is not a sin. It can't be. Because a sin must go against God. And if you are lying to get Bibles so that people can come to God, how could that be a sin? You tell people these things, you got, it's in the Bible, you got to, right? So this goes for anything. Right? Not just lying. For anything, it has to transgress against God. This is why we were just talking about we can get angry before and not sin. Because when we get angry, right, somebody did something to a normal emotion happens, right? Now, as Gary said in the beginning, if you get angry against God, that's a whole different ball game because you transgress against who? God. You see how simple it is to when you have these three things up now to put it together? Right, so if you're angry because somebody did something to you, but you're like, you know, it's not because you're again going against God's law, you're not going against God, and you're not outside of His will, then how would your anger be sin? It goes for anything, right? So that's how simple it is, right? Don't be confused though, because I want to make it clear people online, God, right, if you go against God or His moral law, it is still sin. That's what I'm saying. So the regular person that's lying, that's going against moral law, God's law, it's sin. Don't forget that. Being in God's will cannot be sin. Because God's will can't be sinful. Uh-oh. <laughs> that is something we need to understand. This verse is a verse that gives you a clear realization of what is happening. Many plans, this is in Proverbs, are in man's mind. So God might give us something to do. But it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. In other words, it's God's purpose to carry it out. Yeah. We have it. And God says, this is, Moses never got a map how to lead the people. That's why he got angry and hit the rock. But still, God's will have to be carried out and God's purpose and God's plan. So we have the plan in our minds and sometimes God doesn't tell us how we're getting there. Just like how he got me here, I still don't get it. You know, why well, he had to send me to New York City, then from New York to Maryland, then shut down the school in Maryland to come to Lancaster, then move back to Maryland and graduate to get me back here in Lancaster and pass Lancaster down here to Pennsylvania Dutch country. I'm like, God, can you just draw a straight line from Jamaica here? I would have been here a long time. Wow. We have, yeah, we have plans in our mind, but it's the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. His purpose for me was to be here, and it stands. So we have to understand that, right? So whoever God chooses to allow his purpose or will to be carried out is up to him. We are not in charge. We need to understand that. And... We are the ones that do it by faith, right? And we might not do it perfectly, just like I keep on knocking my friend, knocking this, with this thing. He knocked it the, when he should have just speak to the rock. We're not going to do it perfectly. But once we are in God's will, we are in good standing. And that's Bible study for today. I, I mean, we were so talking, you know, I couldn't stop. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. And next and all of that. Oh, that was the noise. Okay. Hope it didn't cut off the recording. Oh yeah, it did that. Oh man, so nobody was online. Oh Thank God. I have the I have it recording on the laptop so I can post it online afterwards.